True story. Never caught a fish before. But I'm hoping that might change today with a little help from Chef Joseph Schwab. Joseph, thanks for meeting me here. No problem, thank you. This is exciting. So you've set this up for me. Yeah. What do I need to know before we commence with this part? When you're casting, just go to like 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock. Oh, I like that. like that. Push your release button down here. Oh, dear. How do I get it back just up? Just reel, and then it'll oh. click off. <laughs> and then just release, just like so. I'm going to try it. You ready? Yep. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> okay, we're gonna try that again. That's and we're gonna uh, have confidence. Release your thumb right at two, at, at at two, two o'clock, yeah. Close. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Joseph, this is no reflection of you as a teacher. This is all me. You ready? Yeah. There you go. Then you just reel in your Oh, this is nice. Run. I like this. To fish? Uh, my uncles, my grandpa, we always went fishing. Oh my we gosh. have a nice family lake back home. Uh huh. Where's home? Manitoulin. Manitou, oh my yeah. god, it must be beautiful. Yeah. And you come from a really large family. Yeah, a huge family. So from my grandmother down to my generation, there's close to 100 of us. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> what does a family gathering yeah. look like? Huge, <laughs> huge. Huge. You better hope you catch a lot yeah. of fish. This area has a real significance for indigenous cultures, doesn't it? 500 years ago, there'd probably be little huts, fishing huts over along the riverbank here. Uh huh. Usually, per family or per tribe, would have their own fishing area uh -huh. where they would fish off of. Depending on the time of the year, like in the early spring, like a lot of fresh salmon would be coming in from, yeah. from the bigger bodies of water to spawn. And then slowly after that, it would probably be a lot of trout. Wow. And then smelts would be coming in. So that's when we would try to catch as much fish as we, we possibly can to, to have for the, for the season. And that's pretty much how the Humber River was. It, it fed a lot of communities up. It, it goes far up north, right? Far, so, far, yeah. right? So let's say I am successful. How will I know? You will feel like a little nibble on the back, on the tip of your... A little uh, tension there. Yeah. And then you would just like snap your rod back to okay. set the hook. It would be squirming. It'd be squirming, it'd be hopefully a good fight. <laughs> I think I might take this up in my personal life. I think it's better than reading a book. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why. <laughs> Chef Joseph, we didn't catch anything today, but through the magic of television, maybe we can fudge it and make it look like we did. Oh yes, for sure. <laughs> Thank you so much for teaching me. No problem, thank you. Welcome back. Okay, so Jess, you didn't end up catching any fish, but we do <laughs> indeed have some beautiful fish in front of us here today. Yes, the magic of television helped out, and the grocery store, <laughs> here to show us three different ways to prepare your next cash. We have with us in studio, Chef Joseph Schwana. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Joseph, it's great to meet you. And you know, you were 13 around there when you started cooking. Yep. You were learning from your mother in the art of indigenous cuisine, but you're also trained in the classical French style of cuisine. Yeah. And both of those are represented in what you've brought us today, right? Yeah. So tell us about that whole journey, that culinary journey. Well, as quickly as I can. So the, the whole culinary journey for me, it's just, it's trying to re-educate myself on my indigenous culture because I was so ingrained with French cookery, yeah. right? So that's what we learned is French cookery in, in school. So, and that's what everybody uses these days. Um, so I really had to reinvent myself to relearn my indigenous culture through food. Mm. I love that. Wow. Yeah. All right, so you use rainbow trout in all of these dishes. Yeah. The first one we're gonna talk about has uh, barbecue and sumac. Talk to us about this one. Yeah, so this is a barbecued uh, braised, like, well, barbecue baked. Um, and we have a little, we're gonna take a little sample while you talk. Yeah, uh, it has a sumac, which is a, a tree. It's like 
the northern palm tree, I guess it has the little red berries mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. come out in the mm -hmm. late summer. So we use that and we grind it up. So it has a lot of citrus notes mm -hmm. as well as like some maple syrup. My uncle actually rendered this maple syrup down this oh, year. Wow. Wow. So wow. That goes on top. And also a good note is a, I also finished it off with the uh, candy cap mushrooms. Say that again, the... Candy cap mushrooms. Candy, candy cap mushrooms. Yeah, it's just located right here under the table. Okay, yeah. wow. So it has a lot of uh, floral notes and a lot of the notes of the maple. Sorry. Yeah, it's right? beautiful. You yeah. grilled this? Yeah, so this one is grilled. So what we do, yeah, it's just grilled just on a high heat. I, I, I'm afraid to grill fish because it's mm. so delicate mm. and like I'm worried about it sticking to the grill. So do you have any tips of how to make sure it doesn't fall apart? Yeah, so I'd like to wrap the grill in halfway with a foil and just okay. crank it up really high. Okay. So and then that's going to sear the skin onto the grill so yep. it doesn't stick. Ah, right. got it. Okay. So it's got to be yeah. hot enough so oh. that it doesn't stick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then so you test to see if it can move, and then you kind of know. Yeah, and if it and if it doesn't move, just leave it because the the meat will always tell you when to move. Oh, right? so okay. it'll release itself. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. It'll release. Oh, love it. No. Okay, next up, you have for us baked wild herb crusted uh, rainbow trout. So tell uh, tell us a bit. It looks so beautiful. Good. Tell yeah. us about this, boy. Yeah, bite. so we made. Um, a, uh, like a kind of like a pesto mm -hmm. out of like wild rams. I threw some parsley mm -hmm. and some dill in there to brighten it up a bit more. And that actually is just right here. Mm -hmm. And it goes really well with fish, like the rams. Right now they're in season. Um, and fine. same with the fiddleheads that serve with it. Some little bit of okra and the wild rams I just tossed with a little bit of butter mm -hmm. and shallots. I love mm -hmm. a good fiddlehead. This one has the so herbs good. in it. This one is like springtime on a plate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's beautiful. So and then the third dish that you've brought, oh, sorry, but we're well, not ready for the third dish. Let's talk about this. Like, What would make another the good side dish for this? Well, this one here, would you can do any like seasonal veg, right? So whenever you're cooking, try to do as low, like as seasonal as possible. So you're bringing in more of your own terroir into it, yeah. but also your own influence, right? So I always tell my students at the, at the colleges, you can give, 40 chefs the same recipe, mm -hmm. and each of those recipes and each one of those dishes will come back different because it's their yeah. own personality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You find a way to sneak it in. So asparagus might be nice with this. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. really, really well. Oh my gosh. So, and finally, you've prepared for us cornmeal crusted deep fried rainbow trout with Saskatoon berry mayo. Yeah. We're gonna dig in. You tell us all about it. Yeah. So um, the we, traditionally we never had um, gluten, so no gluten, like no flour, no right. wheat, and all that stuff in our diet. So I, I use a lot of cornmeal and corn flour mm -hmm. in, in my cooking. Mm -hmm. So I also made a Saskatoon berry like mayo or aioli instead mm -hmm. of like having your traditional tartar sauce. This is something that's mm -hmm. more sweet and uh, more vibrant. That, that I, you can use. It's gonna take it's a little taste. Oh, I didn't yeah. get that. Can I have a little sauce of that? You put some in there for okay, me? You get Thanks, champ. <laughs> <laughs> now, Saskatoon berries, please. I find it difficult to find. So, if you mm -hmm. can't find them, could you substitute something else in? Yeah, something like blueberries, something that's blueberries really... Blueberries would yeah, work? Yeah, really nice. Oh, thank you. Oh, my They're God. They're very similar to uh, blueberries. Mm. Although, that, that is good. That is that, really that delicious. That is so good, and especially, like, so... What is the, the baking oh process like for that? Yeah, that's yeah. scary. So the cornmeal is, um, I like to, instead of having it at high heat, usually okay. fires are usually about 350. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I usually go about 300. Okay. So that way you're not burning your herbs. You mm -hmm. want them to be more aromatic right, in the right, oil. Yes. So a little lower temp okay. would be good. And a neutral oil, like canola oil. Okay. Like do you have, out of all the, the ways that one can prepare fish, do you have a favorite technique like pan fried, grill, deep fried? Just over an open fire. Over oh, an open yeah. fire. As soon as you catch your fish, just gut it and then yeah. season it up and Fresh. put it on the grill. And simple seasonings? Yeah. Yeah. I have an okra question, because I love okra, but I, I can't make it so that the way it, it's done here is the outside, I mean, it's gooey and soft inside, but the outside is crispy. How do we, how do you get that right? It, um, Prior preparation prevents poor performance, right? So <laughs> as long as you do your mise en place, uh, Per, like perfect. So okay. what I like to do is I like to just uh, heavy salted water, uh, blanch it like for a minute and a half, then okay. cold running water. That okay. It'll keep it nice and moist inside, but nice and crunchy on the outside. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's so, so good. good. Sorry I didn't ask a lot of questions. This food is so good. All I've been doing no. is eating. I'm cleaning my plate. I'm literally cleaning my plate. <laughs> So good, everybody. Thank you. Okay, Chef Joseph, thank you so much for being here. Everything is beautiful, it's delicious. We really appreciate it. 
Thanks for watching. We've got lots more discussion and debates on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. Don't forget to click like and subscribe.